Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Get Good at Open Roller Coast Tycoon 2. In this episode, I'll be showing you how to make a, a good looking dueling coaster. Now, for a, to make a good dueling coaster, there's two elements that are uh, really important. One of them is uh, timing. So uh, here you can see an example of a dueling coaster. Um, one that's timed, uh, well, almost perfectly. They go up the hill together at the same time. And at the end they also uh, arrive at the station at the same time. But I still think this is not a good dueling coaster. That's because it's uh, missing one important thing, which is uh, interaction. Which is the second uh, important thing for dueling coasters. So that's uh, the reason why uh, I think the mirror mirror coasters uh, are not good uh, dueling coasters. It is uh, the e easiest way to make a dueling coaster because uh, you can just copy uh, a track and yeah, just copy it, mirror it, and uh, you'll have a working dueling coaster, which gives you the extra stats. But if, like me, you don't care about stats, you only care about the looks, then this just isn't uh, very good. So, let's uh, get rid of this coaster and we'll start uh, building a proper one. Now, you can, there are several types of uh, dueling coasters you can make. For example, you can uh, make them race next to each other for a lot of the time, or uh, you can just make them interact at uh, several points in the track. You can even make uh, two coasters of different types uh, duel with each other. There's just uh, many, so many options of what uh, you can do. Now, first off, uh, let's make a dueling uh, wooden coaster. This will just be an uh, example uh, coaster. So, um, let's start with the station. And we'll also start uh, another track right next to it. Now while building this it helps if you uh, just temporarily give them both uh, well, bright different colors. Just so you always know uh, on which track you are actually working. And so of course it can get confusing if both of them are the same color. So I will just color one of them orange and the other one blue. All right, uh, we could make a chain lift uh, right up from the from the station, but let's just say we would want uh, want a curve here, and we want our station to be uh, right here. Now, obviously, the orange coaster has to traverse uh, less amount of track right now. So that means uh, it, it will arrive at the chain lift earlier than the, than the blue coaster. Now to solve this, one thing you could do is uh, just make another turn here. But I kind of like to have the drop right after the chain lift. So uh, in order to solve that, there's some uh, tricks you can use. So our drop will be uh, right here. There's some tricks we can use. Uh, one of them I like to use is... Uh, actually, let's synchronize them. One trick I like to use is just put the chain lift uh, hill chain speed a little bit higher. And then we'll go into our cheat menu, which you will have seen in most of my videos. Uh, we'll do just allow chain lifts on all track pieces cheat. And we'll change this curve for one that has a chain lift on it. Now, to uh, test them both at the same time, actually, we first need an uh, entrance and an exit. To make sure they both leave at the same time uh, for testing, I will just pause the game, put them both in test mode, and then unpause. And since this one now has a chain lift, they now uh, both arrive at the upwards chain lift at the same time. 
So yeah, those are just uh, little tricks you can use to uh, to synchronize them, even if one of them has a tighter turn than the other. This is useful, especially right after the station. But yeah, how you go to the chain lift is up to you. Usually, I would just go uh, straight up the chain lift from the from the start. Now here we have the first uh, drop. Mm, I think I'll make it a little bit less high. All right. Now from from this point, you can just do with the tracks uh, what you want. Now, one thing, like I said, that's really important in dueling coasters is interaction. And you can, for example, make that by uh, making near misses in the track, or uh, you can just let them race each other. Or uh, well, yeah, there's just plenty of options. Right now, I think uh, I'll just let them drop, make a little bit of a turn outside, and then I'll let them uh, pass each other uh, head on. Alright, I think this looks uh, promising. Let's see how the trains fare. Alright, I think that looks uh, quite cool. Okay, the tracks are separated now and uh, we should probably let them meet up again at some point in the track. And maybe after they meet I'll let them race with the tracks quite close to each other until the finish. Now, um, it's, so what some people find really difficult is to let the tracks uh, meet up at some point or to actually time them to reach a point in the track at the, at the same time. Now one thing you should uh, remember that makes timing easier is that uh, if you put one track lower than the other, obviously the cars will be faster there, because they will have gained more speed. If you keep a track higher than the other, the trains will be slower there. So really, the key to making the cars uh, reach the, the finish uh, at the same time, for example, is just by playing with the height of the coasters. So what I think I will do here is, uh, I want the coasters to meet up somewhere around here and obviously the orange coaster has uh, less track to traverse to get here than the blue coaster so I will just put the blue coaster at a lower level with respect to the ground and then they should meet up here roughly at the same time so let's give it a try no, I will <laughs> close them now so they don't crash and let's continue building Alright, um, the blue track is lower here than the orange track, so let's see uh, how well they are timed. Okay, they go up the hills here. Blue track is lower, and as you can see, they are now the coaster on the blue track passes right under the one on the orange track, right here at this moment. Because I put the blue one at a lower, lower to the ground, it's faster here, and that uh, got them to be timed uh, nicely. Well, for example, I could make the orange one uh, a little bit slower by just uh, making the track a bit higher here. But yeah, that's really uh, how you play with uh, with the speed of the coasters to get them to interact at the right uh, moments. Now, another thing you should keep in mind is that uh, when coasters are filled with guests, they will be heavier and that will usually make them faster throughout the track. So if one of the coaster uh, constantly fills up and the other one doesn't, well, then obviously uh, it will be almost impossible to time them correctly. So in, 
if if one of them uh, usually fills up and the other doesn't, you can either just both set them to uh, wait for full load, or just make the minimum waiting time uh, longer. Anyway, I will just uh, let these coasters race uh, around the track uh, until they meet up here again at the at the finish. Now, when building a dueling coaster, you should uh, frequently test your tracks, just to see uh, how well they time up. Because you don't want to be building a long section of track, only to find out much later that the timing isn't correct. So it's better to still change it up uh, early, if necessary. Okay, so far the timing of these coasters seems to be perfect. Now, when you let coasters uh, race each other, or when you put them uh, on tracks next to each other with hills, uh, it's usually a good idea to vary their uh, speed a bit. Or uh, I, What I like to do is just make hills of different heights right next to each other. I sometimes even let them pass over or under each other a few times, just to make the racing aspect of the ride uh, much more exciting. This is more exciting than if the hills are always just uh, the same height next to each other. Now here we have a curve, which they will both go through at uh, roughly the same speed, but since the blue coaster here has the tighter curve, it means it, it will be going through it faster than the orange coaster. So to fix that, I will just make uh, the next hill for the blue coaster a bit higher than the one for the orange coaster, just so the orange coaster can uh, catch up with the blue one. Now I also kind of want them to switch position here for no particular reason. So I will just make an S-Band here and I'll do the same for the blue coaster. And that allows them to swap positions. Now here you could see a situation where the orange coaster was uh, ahead for quite a bit. So in order to uh, time them again correctly, we'll just make the blue coaster a little bit lower to the ground. And we'll make the orange one a little bit higher. And that should roughly put them at the same... Uh, yeah, at the same position again. Now we still have a short uh, stretch to go to the end. So I think we'll just make a block break section here and then another uh, block break section right here. Now typically for dueling coasters um, if you want two trains you'll want to have four block sections. I mean, if you want two trains to run the same, same track, you'll want four block sections. Um, the reason for this is that, uh, well, for example, let's just say that two of your trains are waiting here, both at the end of the chain lift hill, uh, for the next trains to reach the block section. Now, um, if one train reaches the block section a little bit earlier, for example, maybe it had more guests in it than the other tr than the other uh, train. Then the block section will be free a little bit earlier than the other train, and that would also mean that the train, for example, in the orange track, would be able to leave the chain lift earlier than the one on the on the blue train. And that would just keep happening throughout the rides, and uh, that would always mean they go out of sync already on the on the chain lift hill. 
So in order to prevent that, it's best to just make uh, some extra block sections. There's more than you need. And that way, uh, yeah, the trains will usually not have to wait for uh, wait here for the block section in front of them to clear. But they can just immediately go whenever they reach the top of the chain lift. You may also have to play a bit with the minimum waiting time of these coasters. If you don't want them to, uh, to be waiting here on the top of the chain lift. Okay, I'm just putting some brakes here with a block brake at the end. Okay, it looks like we have a little issue here because we need the blue track to be on this side and the orange track on this side. So I'll backtrack a little bit just so I can put them on the correct side. Alright, it looks like I've now timed them to reach the block breaks at almost the same time. So from here we can just uh, gently guide them to the station. And here at the end I'll put another block section right in front. And that will help uh, synchronization throughout the, life, uh, the lifetime of this ride. Again, also on, uh, on slow sections like these, just like you can do in the, in the beginning with chain lifts, if you happen to have a curve at the end of your line where the trains are going slow, you can also again uh, make one of the tracks a little bit faster by putting a chain lift on the outside curve. And that uh, may also help you with your uh, timing. Alright, I will now just test it uh, one more time and uh, they should be going uh, why they should be synchronized quite well. Oh, now, now you can see what happens if you don't pause the game before you put them in test mode. If you open one uh, a little bit sooner, then one train will leave while the other is still waiting. So I will just close them twice, just so the trains disappear. I pause the game now. Now they should leave at the same time. Actually, uh, the trains are in block section mode now, and I want, uh, well, we have four block sections now, and we now have three trains, which means that the trains will probably wait on top of the chain lift uh, for the track to clear, so I will now just stick to having uh, two trains. So two trains uh, less than or one train less than the amount that is possible is usually uh, the best choice. Alright, I think this looks uh, quite good. They seem to be uh, synchronized uh, quite well. And it's mostly because uh, I paid close attention to the speed of the roller coasters. Now, as you can see here, the trains are still waiting here at the top of the chain lift for this track section to clear. So to fix that, um, you should just open the rides and play with the, the minimum waiting time. Just to make sure they don't already reach the top of the chain lift uh, before the trains clear this uh, section of block breaks. But yeah, once you realize you can uh, easily manipulate the timing of your rides by changing the height of the coasters, um, making dueling racing coasters becomes easier. Now, this, these are not the only ways to, uh, to provide interaction. I mean, uh, this is a wooden coaster, so they don't have inversions. So they really uh, mostly have to do it with uh, near misses and uh, racing elements. But for uh, many other coasters, uh, you can actually use uh, inversions for interaction. 
For example, uh, if you make two uh, inverted or two looping coasters next to each other, or for example with, uh, with a loop, you can uh, pass the other track through it. So, for example, if you have a twister coaster, if you make a loop, then you could make another twister coaster. And one really cool thing you could do, for example, to provide interaction is to just uh, pass another inversion right through it, for example. And of course it looks really cool if, the belt, if they both pass through this inversion at the same time. But yeah, that's just a really, a really nice ways to provide uh, interaction. Another thing you could uh, easily do is uh, to make uh, interlocking uh, corkscrews, for example. Now, right here I will uh, show you what I mean by uh, playing with the minimum wait times for your coasters. The good thing about opening them is uh, that the coasters haven't left here yet and these, these trains have already cleared these block break sections. So that means these trains will not wait here on top, but they will immediately go. And that will uh, that means they will uh, stay uh, synchronized here. So yeah, that uh, that looks perfect, I think. So they both have a ride time of 1 minute 12 seconds. This one's just 1 minute 13 seconds, but you can see them enter the station at the same time. Now, something you will happen see happen now is, uh, well, the red train has more gas, so it will be a little bit heavier. So it will clear the track uh, a little bit faster. So yeah, there's not much uh, you can do about that except uh, having your trains both wait for a full load. But yeah, not really much you can uh, do about that. It also works like that in uh, for real uh, dueling coasters. For real dueling coasters, sometimes there's actually a, a weighing uh, system that uh, that measures the weight of the trains, and uh, depending on that, uh, it will allow one train to dispatch the the station a little bit earlier, or it will be allowed to uh, leave the chain lift a little bit earlier. But yeah, I hope this uh, video was uh, useful f for you. Uh, this should help you create uh, dueling coasters that are timed a lot nicer. And uh, don't forget to uh, create some nice interaction between uh, the trains. I think it's the most important aspect of uh, dueling coasters. You want them to interact with each other, which is the best added value of dueling coasters. Now, of course, uh, we made them blue and orange just uh, for the building uh, process. Of course, when you are done, you can just uh, put them to the color you want them to have. Let's go for a little bit uh, lighter shade of brown. And of course, you should uh, give the trains a nice color. Blue and red usually work well for uh, dueling coasters. But yeah, how you color them is really uh, up to you. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again in the next one. See you later.